Well, hello, folks. I just want to say thanks for joining us here at New Hope Christian Fellowship for a time of worship and the Word and this, in this virtual church experience where we could all gather together and just walk through a, a time with the Lord. And I pray that God will just touch you richly and the power of the Holy Spirit shall embrace you and gird you up. Today I got Matt and Andrea. They're going to lead worship for us. And so I want you to sing. I don't know who's in your room. I don't know where you are. You may be by yourself or you may be with a group of people. In any event, come and let's worship together. Lift up your voice. Sing us, Matt and Andrea. be your name in the land that is plentiful where streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place though I walk through the
government more secure knowing your heart never been so free caught in your love for me never been more secure knowing your joy even in the midst of insecurity the things going on around us we can come to the Lord and he hears us I don't want to take a moment and just pray for people there's a lot of people going through issues and I think the Holy Spirit is here just to touch your life and so let's pray together father I thank you that we can bring our needs before you you indeed share with us bring our needs before you and Lord there's many people within the sound of our voices here that just need to know that you love them and you care for them and you will provide for them. Why? Because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Nissi, our banner. You are the one that comes and brings life to us. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. And so, Lord, I just speak Jesus over the situations of their lives. I speak Jesus over their bodies that they would be healed. I speak Jesus over their circumstances that they would find an incredible order, even in the midst of all this disorder, an incredible order of their life that would bring such a, a, a fulfillment and a joy within them. I pray, Father, that as we open the word, let it come to life in us and let us find the hope that can only come from you. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come even in this virtual way and come to touch your heart and our hearts itself, ourselves shall be touched. We ask this in Jesus' great name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Matt, Andrea. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to uh, share some here from the Word. And You know, I've been thinking about storms here recently, and there's a lot of uh, things about storms in the Bible. But before I get into that, let me just exhort you as New Hope Christian Fellowship, as the people of Christ, no, no matter where you are and no matter what's going on in you, keep connected. See, the body of Christ is designed to be touching one another. And I know we can't get together per se, but we can get together by phone calls or by texting or by messaging. Keep in contact with people. You probably know senior citizens that can use a phone call. Or you probably know people who are sick that can use a phone call or a message or a card. You know what? There's so many ways to keep connected with people. Let me encourage you, stay connected with people. And make an effort to do it. When you wake up, say, who can I call today? Who can I touch today? And then expand it beyond not just the people of the church, but go into your neighborhood and, and, and understand the neighbors that are around you. You can touch them. You could talk to them. You can encourage them. So I just want to encourage you, do that. All right? Do that. Well, I was reading in Mark chapter 4, talking about storms. I love reading about storms because incredible things happen when we go through storms. And one of the storms that is spoken of here in Mark chapter 4 is when Jesus had them get into the boat, the disciples. You remember that story. In fact, let's just read it, and then I'll come back. Here it says this. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. 
And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he, Jesus, got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Can I just jump to that last verse and then I'll go back? The wind and the waves obey him. The storms that come into your life are under the obedience of God. Do you realize that God knows you and he knows where you are and he knows what you need and he knows what you're going through and he will touch your life. You see, God has ordained things to come into our life in order to do something in us. And ultimately, that is to draw us near to him. But allow me just to go through a few of these things in terms of the verses. Remember, it says, when the day and the evening came, he said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Do you know what I get out of that passage? Those guys were in the boat, not because of some sin. They were in the boat, not because somebody had this grand idea. They were in the boat because Jesus told them to get in the boat. I want you to sink in there. You see, sometimes we think that we did something wrong, and as a result of doing something wrong, we're in this situation. Some people are talking about, you know, maybe this is a vast judgment of God. You know, I can't talk about all that. Only God can talk about all that. But I can say this. I don't think we've been disobedient. I think God is doing something to purify his people and to shape his people and to let his love be poured out into us so that we can draw near to him. It was not some sin that put them in that boat. It was not some wrong thing. Jesus designed that they would go into the boat because Jesus knew in advance that a storm was going to test them. That brings us to the next verse. It says, leaving the crowd behind. i got to pause there. The crowd throughout Scripture, to me, represents the concerns of the world. How often do we see the Pharisees and the Sadducees concerned about what the crowd will say? You see, Jesus is not concerned about the crowd. How many times do we see miracles take place when they push the crowd out of the way so that they could focus on Jesus? The crowd represents the concerns of the world. And in this particular case, they left the crowd behind because they were leaving the concerns of the world behind because God wanted to do something particular in them. Let me share with you something. God wants to do something particular in you. And it may be a furious squall that comes up, just like it says here in the scripture. Those moments of crisis will seem to overwhelm you. Remember, the water was coming into the boat. It seemed overwhelming to them. And so furiously and, and frantically, I should say, they were working that boat. By the way, these were professional people who worked on the boats, you see. They were working that boat and trying to save their lives until they came to a point when they said to Jesus, don't you care? We are about to die. Where was Jesus? He was in the back of the boat, and the Bible says he was asleep on a cushion. Now, I've been to Israel, and I've seen the, the Jesus boat that's there. It's, it's not necessarily the boat Jesus was in, but it was a boat of that era. It was not a very big boat. And if you had the disciples in there, and Jesus was in the back, and there's a wind blowing and tossing to and fro, Jesus had this incredible assurance that everything was going to be all right. And they were worried. Aren't you afraid that we are going to die Jesus was not afraid to die because he knew, in, in, in that particular case, in the storm, because he knew he had a mission. And the mission was not yet. It, his mission was the cross. And so he had this assurance, even in the midst of that storm, he had this assurance that all will be well. I share with you the same principle. All will be well as we put our faith and our trust in the Lord, son, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to realize something. And this is very important. God does not always promise life in this world, but he has promised us eternal life. What do I mean by that? There will times storms will come, and yes, we may even lose our life. The disciples lost their lives. Peter was martyred. 
Paul was martyred. What about Stephen? He was martyred. They, they threw stones at him. Was he in sin? No, God was using that to propagate and advance the gospel and indeed show people how great he really was. And so I want to share with you something. You may be going through a storm, but what we have to do is trust God and simply be obedient to him and let him worry about the results. This is hard. Because we have in our own mind how we think the results should be. But Jesus is saying here, and he's teaching us something, we have to trust God even through that storm. Even though, and it's hard to say, it may take my own life. I have to trust that God is going to take care of it in his will and his plan, that he would receive the glory. And yes, I would receive the benefit, and God would use me to bless others around me because it's not about us, it's all about him. Do you remember what Jesus prayed? Not my will, but thy will be done. Is God teaching us a lesson today that we would say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done? But here we see in this passage a great phrase. Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. And I love the King James. The King James says, peace be still. You may be in this time of confluence in your life when the waves are going all around. And you might just need to say, God, I need your peace in my life. Let Jesus come into your boat and let him speak to the waves and let peace take place. I want you to know Jesus loves you. Yes, even through the storms. Yes, even through the good times, Jesus loves you. And the Bible says he works all things out for his good in your life. All things. Which means that as I am obedient to him, he's going to work into my life those things that need to be done for my own good as well as for the Lord's glory. So today I just want to pray with you and let you know the Lord loves you. And he's in your boat. Let the Lord take you through those storms. Let the Lord take you to the place that he has designed for you. You just got in the boat. The Lord's going to take you. I was raised in Santa Cruz. And Debbie, help me out, would you? I was raised in Santa Cruz, and Santa Cruz had these surfers. And I was never a surfer. I couldn't surf. And so I, as I was watching the surfers, they would get in this prime spot in the wave where the curl, I don't know the exact place, I'll just call it the sweet spot of the wave. And in that sweet spot of the wave, they would ride and they could take that wave for a long ways because they were in that particular spot. I want you to know the Lord is have, has you in a very sweet spot in your life. He will take care of you and he will love you and he will bless you. I just want to pray for you real quick. Lord, I thank you for the goodness of God. And I thank you, Lord, that you're in our boat. And the storm has come in the terms of a virus, or the storm has come in terms of finances, or the, the storm has come in terms of a, a job that may be in jeopardy. There's a lot of uncertainty going on. But this thing we know, we could put our trust in you, and you will hear us, and you will bless, and you will touch, and the goodness of God is ours. And so, Lord, we trust you today. We trust you in every capacity. We put our, 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 our future in your hands. We put our children into your hands. We put our finances into your hands. We put all those things that we hold dear into your hands. And in doing that, we're going to say, Lord, you take care of it because you are our God. And Lord, let us get, as the disciples ultimately did, let us get to our destination, doing the work of the Lord and being filled with his purpose. We just want to acknowledge our love for you in Jesus' great name. Amen. Amen. I know this is virtual church, but I'm kind of enjoying coming into your place wherever you are and having this time with you. You could send me an email if you want. You could send a text message. And, and you, could, you could just connect with me in any way you want. But, you know, one of the ways, frankly, let's be honest, one of the ways that you connect is through an offering. If you want to give an offering to the church, you can go to our website. You can get on the, the there'll be a slide on the screen that you could text uh, uh, an offering because expenses still go on. 
So we're trusting the Lord too. And as you are obedient in that way, it's going to bless all of us. And so Lord, I pray that you will touch their lives and, and let the supply of God be seen in all of us as we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. I pray that God will richly bless you. Have a great week.